Hi there, this is Sandra from The Schwoven's Nest. Today I'm going to show you how to make some handmade gifts that you'll be proud to give for Christmas. This first project is for the beer drinker in your life and possibly even the hunter. I'm using a water-based gel stain in the color walnut and I'm just going with a rag right on top of this cedar plank. This is a plank that would be used for grilling fish on the barbecue and I find these at my grocery store at the end of the season and they're usually on for half price so this board actually only cost me 50 cents. I'm also using this crate from the Dollar Tree, but when I used this water-based stain, it wasn't dark enough. So I switched over to my Verithane dark walnut and then just rubbed one layer of that on. It seemed to match the cedar plank a lot better. I picked up this bottle opener and I'm gonna screw that into the top of the wood plank. So I went to my Cricut Joy and I designed a decal for this. And the first thing I'm going to be putting on is a beer bottle in the shape of antlers. It's really cute. It's something that I saw on Pinterest and I decided to try and recreate it. Now I am using white vinyl, but this is Walmart shelf liner vinyl. I did not buy the Cricut vinyl because it's just a little bit too expensive and because I'm just starting out and learning how to use the Cricut I didn't want to waste all of the good vinyl. So here is the little beer bottle with my little antlers and then on top of that I'm going to put the words beer season. Since the vinyl isn't a really super good quality I'm going to go over it with a coat of Mod Podge to make sure that it doesn't peel up. I'm going to use hot glue to attach the little crate, but I'm also going to secure it with a couple of nails from the inside. The last thing for me to do is just attach a sawtooth hanger to the back. I love how this turned out and I think it's going to make someone very happy. For my second DIY gift, I'm going to make a gnome. So there's lots of people out there who are gnome collectors and they're really not that difficult to make. I'm using this buffalo check or buffalo plaid, whatever you want to call it, fabric. It's flannel and it was a sheet that I picked up at a thrift store. I'm always on the lookout for different patterns and the grays and whites and blacks are something that I really like. I've also got this navy blue stocking which is an old stocking that's not being used anymore. The first thing I'm doing is making a hem and I'm just using hot glue to fold it up and place it down. Be careful this does get hot and I did burn my fingers a couple of times even though I have those finger protectors from the Dollar Tree and I have that other little makeup sponge thing too. So there it is the makeup applicator so make sure that you're using something like this to protect your fingers now that i have a nice edge i'm going to match it up to the pattern and then simply hot glue it in place so i'm making a tube of sorts and that's just going to be the start of how i'm making the body I've turned it inside out and you can see here that I'm just going to gather one of the ends and I'm going to use a piece of jute string just to tie it off. A dab of hot glue on the knot will make sure that it doesn't unravel. I've turned it right side out and what I'm going to do is just take some of these sand colors and fillers and beads and all sorts of junk that's in there and I'm going to fill it up about halfway. This is going to really help to secure the bottom of the gnome and make sure that he doesn't fall over. If you don't have this you could use split peas, you could use beans, you could use gravel, stone, whatever you have. I just thought this would be perfect way to use some of this up. Next, I'm going to use some of this stuffing that was just from an old pillow. I'm just gonna pull it apart, loosen it up, and then just push it in a little bit, just so he has a little bit more of a fluffier body too. Then I'm just going to gather up the top the same way I did the bottom and tie it off with some jute string. Now it's time to work on his hat. I'm just going to cut 
the fur off the top of the stocking because I won't be needing it for this project. And when you're cutting fur like this, it just gets all over the place. So just make sure that you pull off any of the excess there just so it doesn't float around and get in your eyes and face and everything. That's what happens to me all the time. So I'm just gonna clean that up. And then I'm going to cut out a triangle of sorts. I'm going to use one of the seams that's already there as a base. And then I'm going to just cut out a really tall, skinny triangle. I'm going to hot glue the two long sides together and that will be the back side of his hat. So here I'm just trying his hat on for size and that's why I put some of the pillow on the inside because if I need to squish it down a little bit I have the ability to do so. So you just want to make sure that it's going to go on all the way around nice and snug. I have this white faux fur and I'm just going to cut a piece off and then I'm going to form it to make a beard for him. To cut this fur, you'll need a really sharp pair of scissors. I have my sewing scissors, but you could also use tiny cuticle scissors or anything that's really sharp. What I'm doing is making small tiny cuts and I'm making sure not to go all the way through to the fur at the bottom. I just want to remove the backside and then it will just pull apart like that. This will prevent me from cutting the fur down because I want that to be nice and long like you can see here. So now I want to make sure that it's going to fit on my little guy's body and it's looking pretty good like it's the right length. It's just too square down at the bottom. So I'm going to do the same technique with the scissors, cut very gently and make sure I don't go all the way down to the bottom and just cut the bottom portion into a V shape. Now that I've got the shape the way I want it, I'm going to use some hot glue and glue that right onto the body. Now it's time to work with the hat. I'm going to take some more of that pillow stuffing and stuff it about halfway up because I want this hat to stand up really nicely, but I also want the end of it to fold over. So I'm just going to be putting some of this stuffing right in the center of it. With the hat just sitting on his head, I figured out where I want his nose to go. So I'm going to use hot glue and glue it right onto the beard. I'm also going to push some of the hair out of the way. So there are a little bits of hair falling on top of the bead. Once the glue is set, I'll be able to start working on his hat. I'm just going to pull it down until I get it in the right spot. I want to be able to tuck that little bead right underneath the hat. So I'll be placing some hot glue there first, and then I'll work my way around to the back of his head. As I work my way around with the hot glue, I'm just going to give the hat a little bit of a wiggle every once in a while to make sure that it grabs the hot glue and sticks really well. So I have decided to make a little ball for his hat and it's going to be in the same fabric as his little body. So I just cut out a circle and now I'm just gluing the top part together and then I'm just going to fill it in with some of the pillow stuffing. I'm going to gather all of the edges together and then tie it off with a piece of twine. Now using a lot of hot glue, I'm going to glue that ball right to the end of his hat. And you can see here that I'm wiggling it around so all of those little furry fibers can catch into the glue and stick. To cover up the jute string and where the hat meets the little ball, I'm cutting off some little bits of fur and I'm going to hot glue those right into place. It's going to do double duty because it turns out so stinking cute. I used some hot glue at the very top of his hat and pinched it together so I could put it in the direction I wanted it to fall. So I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I used to be a hairdresser. I am still a little bit. So I am taking some hairspray to that little faux fur and fluffing it up and making it stand up and look a little bit more cutie patootie. I really love how this gnome turned out. I love the colors and how his little beard looks. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna give this one away or I might even just keep him for myself.
This last project is super cute. I'm taking this wooden cutting board. It was $4 at my Dollarama store and it's acacia wood. What I'm doing is sealing it with a coat of Mod Podge because I'll be using some of my ink and paint pens on it and I don't want them to bleed. I went to my Cricut Joy and I put together this Our Family recipe title and I'm just going to transfer that right to the top of the board. Using painter's tape so I can have a straight line and the Sharpie pen, I'm going to write in the ingredients, making them just a little bit of a fun font, nothing too fancy. And I'm just going to continue all the way down the bottom of the board. I did have some of this cut out with my Cricut Joy, but the transfer tape wasn't very kind to me, so I lost a lot of the letters. So I'm just going back to my old faithful pens for now. So I've got all of the ingredients put down and now I'm just going to go to the left side of the numbers and just draw a little squiggly, which could be a dash if you can't do a little squiggly, but I'm just going to do that, which just kind of makes them into bullet points. And then I'm going to also make the V in the word love into a heart. And I also added a little happy face next to the word laughter. To make the easel part of the cutting board, I'm taking this scrap piece of triangle wood that I've sanded down and one of the planks from the Dollar Tree, those ones that you can get in a pack of six, and I'm going to glue these two pieces together. I've started painting the large easel piece black and now I'm going to work on the front that's going to be able to hold either a smartphone or an iPad, might be a little too heavy for an iPad, or just a recipe. So I'm taking two of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue the two of them together and make an L shape. I'm using my favorite weld bond glue to glue these together and I like to glue wood pieces together first and then paint them. It just ensures a much better hold. So I painted both of these pieces black and now that they're dry I'm going to go ahead and glue the easel onto the back. I have put a pencil line where I need it to sit so I'm going to just put the glue onto the raw wood there. You can see that I started painting that and then I caught myself and I stopped to make sure that it has a nice solid hold to the cutting board and then I'm going to set that aside to dry. I wanted to add a little bit of an embellishment to this cutting board sign. So I'm taking some jute string and making a short bead garland. I think I use about eight or 10 beads on this. So I'm just got a piece of tape at the end and I'm just feeding it through the beads. I also wanted to make a little tassel for the beads and I did make one with the jute twine, but it ended up being too bulky. So I remembered I had one little piece of embroidery floss and I'm just going to go ahead and trim that. And looky here, I already have the makings of a cute little tassel. So I'm just going to pull out some of the threads from the other bunch, tie it together, tie a string on the top so I have something to attach it to the beads and then fluff out the bottom strings. Now that the easel part is dry, I can go ahead and glue on the two tumbling tower blocks and just wipe off some of the excess glue. I think this is going to look really sweet in someone's kitchen on their counter where it can hold their smartphone for a recipe or even just a light recipe book. I think it's going to be a great gift. I hope you enjoyed these three Christmas gift DIYs and got some inspiration to create some of your own handmade gifts this year. If you like this kind of content, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more gift ideas coming soon.